we have a small group. So if you guys have questions, feel free to submit them uh, using the Q&A button beneath and uh, I'll answer them best I can. Um, Alternatively, if there's something that you have that's more of like a conversation uh, rather than a specific question, can feel, you can, I can unmute your mic and we can have a conversation about that. Um, Lee, I'd like to see how to set up some custom carts. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Can you be more specific? And also, even if I, I can already say, probably this question is maybe not something that I'm going to be able to answer in this context. And it's also maybe not something that, well, it depends on, on what you're asking about. I'll let you clarify. Hey, Timothy, welcome. So we, the, just to give you a, a level set. If you have any questions, feel free to submit them in the Q&A button below. Also, if, if you have something that's just more of like a conversation, you can feel free to raise your hand um, and I can unmute your mic. Um, so when you say, Lee, not using the standard cart, are you, uh, are you talking about using a separate product from member mouse to do your cart? Um, again, are you talking about visually just customizing the look and feel of your checkout page? Okay, so this question is from Chad. Um, I'm trying to create a page with member mouse that will show all membership levels and purchase options. Uh, so pages are simply WordPress pages. So you can put whatever you want to put on them. So there's no restrictions. Um, so for example, if I go and I create a new page here um, and I say, I want this, to, like you want it to be a catalog or something of everything that you're offering. I mean, from a design perspective, um, you can use, you know, any kind of page building plugin like Visual Composer, Elementor, whatever. Uh, or just Gutenberg blocks as part of your standard theme to lay things out and make it look the way you want. The only real place that member mouse comes into play here is in terms of inserting uh, your the links to purchase the items. So for that, pretty straightforward, you just go to product settings and then you just say for whatever membership levels and bundles you want to include on this page, you just copy the purchase link. So if I, um, let's say on this page, I want to include links for paid membership A and paid membership B. So for paid membership A, I'll just copy uh, this purchase link smart tag. Um, go back over here. and say this is for paid membership A and just paste in the HTML for that particular link. And now beneath that, I'll do paid membership B. Again, I go back to product settings, uh, copy the purchase link for that membership level and come back to my page and paste that in. And then again, if I wanna add my bundles in here too, I can do this for as many bundles as I want. Let's just say I'm gonna take this bundle B <clears throat> and get the purchase link for that and come back to my page and put bundle B. Um, 
uh, whatever. Okay, so again, look and feel, all that stuff you can control. That's gonna be a part of your theme. That's gonna be a part of any page building plugin that you're using. So I'm not gonna demonstrate that stuff. Um, so this, as it is now, is a page that includes a catalog of the things that are available on my site. So I can go ahead and view this page. And you can see that um, it has all the content that I just added there. Of course, it doesn't look like anything because um, I'm not doing that. But of course, I'm just gonna add some break lines here just so that these things appear on separate lines. Oops. Uh, okay, so the page looks like this. Now, the one other tool that I think you'll wanna be aware of uh, for building a page like this is the decision smart tags where you can detect if the current member has access to the thing that you're telling them to purchase already. So if I just go over to our support center and uh, type in uh, member decision smart tag. Okay, so and then I'll just copy one of the samples down here. You can look at the documentation to understand all the different options you have, but it's but um, in terms of essentially what this does is it allows you to show or hide content based on certain parameters about the member who's looking at the page. So in this situation, maybe I only wanna show the purchase link for paid membership A if the current person looking at the page doesn't already have that membership level. So in that situation, I'm going to do it like this. Um, and what the way that you would read this is if this current member has membership ID of one or whatever. So paid membership A, we need to get the ID for that so that we can put the right ID in there. So I go back to my membership levels and paid membership A is ID two. And I'm also gonna need paid membership B. So paid membership B is three. So A is two and paid membership B is three. You need the opening and the closing tag. So basically at this point, these links will only show up if the current member, uh, well, right now they will show up if the current member does have the things, but that's all we want. We want them to show up if they don't have it. So in order to do that, I just put an exclamation point in front of the number, which basically reads, if this member does not have membership ID of two, then allow them to buy the membership ID of two. If they don't have membership ID of three, allow them to buy that. And then what I can also do is um, do the opposite. So if they do have that membership, then I can say you have paid membership A. And then you could put a link to access the content or whatever you want to do. There's no, there's no limit to what type of content you can put in between these smart tags, any HTML, any CSS, whatever design stuff you want to do, it, you know, it's completely flexible. And we'll do the same for uh, membership three. So you have paid membership B access content here, whatever. It would be a link, but I'm not gonna take the time to do that. And then for bundles, you can do the same thing. So I can say the, the attribute's gonna be different. It's gonna be has bundle. And again, we need to get the ID of this bundle B. So I go back to my bundle screen and I look at, okay, what's the ID of bundle B? It's two. So I put a two in there. So if this current member does not have bundle two, then show them the link to be able to buy it. Okay, and then I'll do the opposite. 
if they do have bundle two, then you have bundle B access content here. Okay, so I will update this. Now the thing to keep in mind about member decision smart tags is they only work in the context of someone being member. Otherwise, there's there's no con contextual information that member mouse has to answer any of these questions because there's no member. So most likely you're going to be doing this on a page that somebody accesses once they're logged in as a member. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a simple purchase here of a free membership. So I'll sign up for this free membership. <clears throat> and after doing that, I'll go ahead and access my catalog page, which was here. Okay, so now we can see it looks exactly the way that it did before because I don't have paid membership A, I don't have paid membership B, and I don't have bundle B, so it's giving me the option to buy all of them. So now if I sign up for paid membership A, Okay, so now that I have that, and if I go back to my catalog, we should see that the page looks different, uh, which it does. So now instead of showing me the, um, again, I didn't do my formatting correctly, there should be a, a break line here. But anyway, you can see that instead of showing me the link to buy paid membership A, it's showing me that I have access to this. And again, now that I have a card on file, I can simply click on this link to purchase bundle B confirm the page will refresh and then it'll show well sorry it won't refresh it'll go to the thank you page but now if i go back to the catalog page and refresh the catalog page you'll see here that now it's showing me i have access to bundle b so i can access content here now this is a very basic example right um not getting into the design stuff at all because your theme and everything is going to take care of that. But what this shows you is how you have the flexibility to create a single page where you can show everything that you have to offer, provide links that somebody can buy, and also use decision smart tags to show or hide content based on what somebody already has. So you can make it with those two tools, you have complete flexibility in making a very dynamic experience for the customer. Um, So Lee, you're asking about how to style a checkout page. It, I kind of just answered that question in, in the ways that I just talked about this. Mostly that's gonna come down to um, working with a page builder plugin such as Elementor is a possible, uh, a popular one. Divi page builder, if you're using the Divi theme, uh, visual composer, um, Thrive Themes has a, a page builder that they do work with their themes. How you lay out your pages is always, how your pages look is always gonna be a thematic question. So it's really not, it's not for me to answer other than to point you in the direction of those things because Member Mouse has nothing to do with that. Our smart tags are designed to output the functional elements of the page itself, which you know, I'm obviously biased, but my opinion is more complex than the design elements. It's it's giving you the thing that's actually gonna process the order. It's gonna sign somebody up. It's going to charge somebody's card. It's gonna collect all that information, um, do all of the uh, sanitization on that data, make sure it's all PCI compliant. All of that functional stuff, Member Mouse takes care of that. It gives you the form field that does the things that it, you need it to do. But then as far as how that looks, how it's how it's laying out, all that stuff, that's none of Member Mouse's business. It all falls into the, the area of the theme and the page builder you're working with. So you can take a look at some of the ones that I just said. Um, I know a lot of people use those and have success, at, have success with them. We use Elementor ourselves on MemberMouse.com. So these are the things that you're going to want to look at in terms of 
answering the question of how you actually make the page look a certain way. Um, this. So this next question is from Tracy. Are we able to do order bumps through member mouse, meaning on the same page as checkout, we can add an additional item if someone checks a box? I think I answered the same question in last week's um, office hours. So there's probably already a video on YouTube that, that uh, talks about this. So I'm not gonna go into too much depth here, but basically, yes, you can do this. Um, hold on. User enters the credit card info and purchases membership A. The user experience would be like this. User enters a credit card info and purchases membership A. And with membership A, we would like to give them the option to also purchase an additional membership B on the checkout page. Okay, so what you're describing is not an order bump as I understand it, it's more, it's an upsell situation. An order bump, and of course, you know, people may be using different terminology. So it, from what I've heard, an order bump is a situation where you're on the checkout page, no purchase has happened yet. And you wanna be able to check a box to add something onto the thing that they already have said that they wanna purchase. Whereas an upsell is after having made a purchase, they're displayed another offer where they can accept that offer uh, with a single click. So those are two different things. Both of them are possible to do with Member Mouse. Um, so mm, upsells, mm, I'm just trying to figure out which one I want to actually go into here. I mean, you're asking basically about an upsell. So the way that you do upsell in terms of member mouse uh, terminology. So the way that you accomplish an upsell in member mouse is, well, let me share my screen again. Uh, let's say, let's say that after purchasing, okay, so bundle B, we already have we already have an upsell page set up for bundle B. So if I click into this page right here, an upsell page starts with just a standard WordPress page. So create any page, um, and then you'll notice that there's a member mouse options box. It'll look like this by default. So then you just specify, okay, I want this to be a confirmation page. And I want it to be a confirmation page that's displayed when somebody buys something. And then you select uh, the bundle, the product that after having purchased that you want to display this page. So in this case, I want to show this page when somebody has purchased this product, which is bundle B monthly. So because I've set this up this way, whenever anybody purchases this product, they'll be shown this thank you page. I'm calling it a thank you page, but it becomes an upsell page basically depending on what content you put on it. So basically in order to make this an upsell page, I would simply now add a purchase link on it. Um, so let's say I want to up them up, upsell them to bundle A. So again, I copy this purchase link, copy that, uh, come back to my thank you page and say, whatever, again, look and feel, design everything that's all dependent on your page builder and your theme. So I'm not really gonna go into that. Um, but basically 
the functional aspect of this is you give them the opportunity to buy your upsell product. You bought this, so we think you'd be interested in this as well. And then you paste in the uh, purchase link and you can also give them a link to, you know, that can go wherever. It can go to their product dashboard or whatever, but it says, no, thank you. Not interested, whatever. You give them another inter um, UI option to not accept the offer and that link can go to anywhere on your site. Okay, so now that I've created this as a, a confirmation page with the member mouse options that gets displayed after purchasing bundle B, we can go through and test the process. So first thing I need to do this is, <clears throat> oh wait, I did update the page, didn't I? Yes, I did. Um, okay, so we go to our product settings and we want to purchase bundle B. So I go to bundles and I find bundle B and I copy the purchase link. And this, this time, because I'm going to paste this directly in the browser, I grab the static link. So static links, you're going to use those whenever you're going to, you want to post that this product is available and allow somebody to buy it from any, from any page that's not actually on your WordPress website. Uh, so I'll go ahead and buy this bundle B. Okay, so now that I've done that, based on our based on what we just configured, it's going to show me this upsell page. Again, I didn't format it well, so it doesn't look very good. But functionally, you bought this, so so we think you'll be interested. I can either say no, thank you, or I can click the buy now link to buy the upsell product. And of course, you can then, you can have upsell chains now. You can have an, a specifically designed upsell page that gets displayed after you purchase bundle A and so on and so forth. So you can have um, whatever kind of flow you want there. So that's how you do upsell pages. Um, order bumps in terms of how I described it. Uh, if I go to the support center, um, this isn't going to be functionally. This isn't going to be a pure order bump because it's not a, the way it's going to work. Is that you're basically going to switch between two different products. You're going to have a product that you know that is the offer without the order bump, and then you're going to have a product that is the offer with whatever you're wanting to add as the order bump, the combined offer. And essentially, the solution is just to have a checkbox that switches. That when you check it off it selects the other product instead of the one that you're checking out with. And so I'm not gonna show you fully how to do this, but there is an article. Uh, and again, I always forget the name of this article, uh, select different product on checkout. Let's try that. Uh, this switch between membership levels or products on the checkout page. So this article shows you some different options on how to switch between a product on a checkout page. And it's using the example of, um, you know, if you have a starter builder or growth plan or something like that, how you would actually on the checkout page allow somebody to switch to a different plan. Um, in your situation, you're not using, you're not gonna use dropdown or buttons, you're gonna use a checkout, you're, you're gonna use a checkbox. But functionally, it's behaving the same exact way as what this article is describing. You're just getting the purchase link for the product that represents the combined offer. And when you check the box, you're just refreshing the page to select that product instead. So the experience of the customer will be that when they check the box, they're buying a product that has, you know, both offers combined into it. So that's how you would accomplish that. Okay. <clears throat> All 
All right, so we've got uh, three minutes left here. Do we have any more questions? Hmm. Nope. All right, well, and then I guess we'll stop here. So appreciate everyone for joining and I uh, hope this was helpful and I hope you have a great weekend and um, stay warm. For me, I'm in Florida, so it's not an issue for me, but I know a lot of places in the country right now are having some challenges with warmth. So if you're in one of those places, I hope that uh, you stay warm and I will see you next time. All right, bye everyone.